This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Chris, uh, you asked a relevant question last night. I mean, Tony Vitell's been to three of the last four College World Series. He just won his first national championship. Is this the best coach in college baseball right now? Ty, right, first things first, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's great to hear from you once again. And I, I would say yes right now. Um, you know, I, I did my preseason head coaching ranking just for fun in the SEC. Obviously, we do that every year for every sport. And so did that for the SEC. I ranked Kevin O'Sullivan number one in those rankings, uh, admittedly, because I just felt like when you looked at Sully's track record, and I think this year it, he made me look really smart towards the end of the season when he pushed that Gators team to the College World Series appearances. But not a no in his last nine super regional tie, and I think the the model of consistency he's built in Gainesville is really unrivaled. But I mean, I also did mention this when I had made that list. I think I had Tony Vitello fifth at that point tie, and again, this was preseason of this year. If I were starting a program tomorrow, there's not a guy I would take other than Tony Vitello. I, I just think with the current climate of the game, I don't think there's a better coach for the current climate. I think with the way that he gets players, he's a players coach. He embraces NIL. He embraces Portal. And, and I love that, honestly, that like fiery side to him and the way that he backs his players. And I know it rubs some people the wrong way, but you got, you want that guy on your side. I don't really want a guy that you know everybody feels warm and fuzzy about, makes everybody feel good. Like As long as he, he makes the guys in my clubhouse feel good and our fan base, then that, that's all I really care about. So I would say right now, Tony Vitello's earned that right to say he's the best coach in college baseball. Obviously, it's it, you know, you got to do it more than one year. But like you mentioned, man, when, when you look at what he's done and when you really put in perspective what he's done at a place like Tennessee, a place that time, I and mean, they, they have five 50 win seasons in their history, and he has three of them. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, they have one national title. He has it. So, I mean, when you really think about what he's done, I think you can make a really fair argument. He is the best coach in college baseball right now. And he was complimentary of Arkansas fans and their program last night. I was looking to listen to his post game press conference. Yeah, even even mentioned Ty, even mentioned that Dave Van Horn. He even mentioned I, I heard him say that in the post game. Even mentioned the impact that Dave Van Horn had. Mm-hmm. That I, I think he even mentioned that uh, Dave Van Horn the best in the game. I mean, so he he was extremely complimentary. I heard that as well of uh, Arkansas's program, and he just said that he would not be in the position he was in you know, without Dave Van Horn, which I thought was really cool. So, Chris, let's let's touch on that real quick because Arkansas fans are asking themselves this morning, why not us, why not us? Uh, <laughs> you have a perspective I think is interesting with South Carolina with them winning in 2010. I bet a lot of South Carolina fans felt that same way, being the SEC and the juggernaut that it is in baseball and some success that other schools found in this league. Take us back to – to, to Columbia to pre-2010, what that fan base felt, and then al- almost what changed when Ray Tanner was able to get over the hump and how you maybe can draw some similarities to here in Fayetteville. Yeah, Ty, si, what's funny is I would say there's a lot of similarities because I'll never forget 2009, South Carolina was knocked out of the, I believe it was the Greenville Regional um, at East Carolina, and they lost the game that knocked them out in like dramatic fashion. I think it was actually extra innings, and they got beat on a walk-off. And the program had always been really, really good, Ty, but they were sort of like Arkansas, had never won a national championship, obviously. And there were people that were really starting to second-guess and think that, hey, the game has passed Ray Tanner by. South Carolina needs to go a different direction. Like, I remember these conversations vividly happening, which this feels silly to say now, but, you know, people were really starting to question, okay, maybe Ray Tanner's lost his fastball. And I think that's the difficult thing, Ty, is, like, you don't just need a great group of players, which equates to a great team, and then you need a great coaching staff. You just need to go on a magical run. So I, I don't know how you tell a fan base, hey, guys, you got to kind of wait and hope and pray that the baseball gods smile on you necessarily because you need matchups to play out in your favor. I mean, guys, let's call it for what it is. I mean, Tennessee was the best team in college baseball this year. They earned that match. They dominated, Chris. They dominated. They, they dominated. But they were they were also the beneficiaries of the fact that Texas A&M was shorthanded. Like, let's just call that for what it is because I'm not saying it would have played out differently but if Texas A&M would have had a healthy Braden Montgomery, who knows? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So it's it just things like that need to play out in your favor and not against you. Um, obviously, in the short term, I think Arkansas has got to get the hitting situated. 
hits. They got to get the hitting fixed, right? It's, I think that's probably when you look back at 2024. I think of the greatest shame for the Hogs is you know we followed them obviously and covered them all season long, and I mean that pitching staff was as electric as any. I mean their front line starting pitching would have gone up against anybody in college baseball. If they could have swung it like Tennessee, they would have won it all. I mean, they had the pitching top to bottom. So they had you can get the hitting. Chris, yeah. just to add to your point, they had the worst batting average of any tournament team. Think about yeah. that. I mean, that yeah, which is hard to believe, honestly. I mean, there's one thing to struggle hitting, but that's hard to believe for an Arkansas club. It really is. So, anyways, the to your point, time in 2010 for South Carolina. Um, they added a couple big time freshmen. You know, they had a they had a strong core of veteran leaders and veteran presence, but they added freshmen. They added a couple guys from the JUCO ranks, which, you know, kind of served as the transfer portal before the transfer portal, right? Uh, added a couple key JUCO guys. And, again, they had freshmen like Christian Walker step up. And then when they got the, you know, they got the Omaha side, they weren't the number one overall national seed, but, you know, they had a guy like Michael Roth emerge who became a hero in Columbia. Christian Walker, like I mentioned, with a couple clutch hits. Jackie Bradley Jr. had a couple, and, um, you know, they had to beat Clemson twice that year, and Omaha did. I mean, it's 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 a mix of a bunch of different things, Ty. I mean, having a great team is just the start of it. You need to go on a run as well and catch fire. And so, you know, I, I know you believe the same as I do, Ty. Arkansas is more than capable of just win if, if, will it ever happen. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, man, because uh, I honestly – so I w- I've been saying this for a while now, 64-94-2024 – they won a football national championship in 64, basketball 94. I kind of thought they'd win a baseball one in 24. Maybe it'll be a year later. We'll have to. So, Ty, basketball or baseball, who wins one first? Just to turn it back Ooh, on you. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I think you uh, I think you might have A lot have of to, optimism with Cal. Yeah, I think you might have to say basketball. And I, So, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm watching – I'm watching this game last night, and there's a moment for me that I will remember for the rest of my life when it comes to Arkansas athletics in recent memory. It's so Arkansas has not been a and but one time since they joined the Southeastern Conference. And that one time they beat him, Eric Musselman came down, Dave Van Horn came down, and there's a picture of Muss, Sam, and Dave Van Horn all together. That was, by the way, the same year that Muss took – the team do the Elite Eight, first Elite Eight that Arkansas had had since 95. Uh, the following uh, postseason, Dave took the team to the College World Series. And it's that, like, bonded togetherness. I'm watching this last night. I see Rick Barnes up there. I see Payne Manning. I see Morgan Wallen. I see Josh Heupel. And, I like, Tennessee, we know, has had a really good basketball program. Uh, they they finally, I guess, made it to, the, if I remember right, at the Elite Eight this year. I know regular season Rick has been something he's been trying to get over. Josh Heupel, uh, they finally beat Alabama, something Arkansas was never able to do against Nick Saban. And then the baseball program wins a natty. Uh, when you look at, like, what Arkansas is in athletics department uh, with the baseball program, with Cal's basketball, with Pittman, I mean, what do you kind of envision for the three major sports looking at Arkansas athletics and is there a cap for one of the sports specifically that maybe the other doesn't have I mean Ty admittedly I would say probably football has more cap than any um you know obviously too I think because we're at a place where Sam Pittman we just don't know what the future looks like you know what I mean it's it's I mean Dave Van Horn and John Calipari Ty it's very clear cut Dave Van Horn in that program we know what the expectation is although it's never happened it's to get to Omaha and win a national championship. Like that's all. That's all they have left to do. And then Ty, I don't think you hired John Calipari to just make the tournament. I think you hired him to compete for a Final Four and win a national championship. Cut the debts down. Like I think that's why you make that kind of move on that guy. And I think he's more than capable of building that in Fayetteville. So that brings us to Sam Pittman. And you know, I, I think that we're in a really interesting place right now because all the chatter going to twenty twenty four. It's it's not about championships or even competing for playoffs. It's about doing enough to bring back, bring yourself back in 2025 and to keep your job. So, you know, when you talk about expectations for each of the programs, you know, I think for Arkansas football, I, I think for the faithful there, it, it's not just to compete for bowl games and just go win seven or eight games. Like when, when Arkansas football is really humming guys, I mean, it's, it's, I think Arkansas is a place where you can get to the college ball playoff. I'm not going to say over the course of a decade, more often than not, because I don't think that's giving credit to how hard it is, but I think it's possible. But especially with the tell just, team, I, twelve team, Chris, you're uh, and I yeah, feel the, the same 12. way about South Carolina too. And we'll go to fourteen teams as well in two years. So I, I just, I 
basically what I'm trying to say, though, Ty, is like I, I think that's a possibility. We just need to know. We need to know. Okay, is Sam Pittman going to be the long term answer or not? And if he's not, who is going to be? You know what I mean? That because that that determines a lot of it. There's a reason they showed those head coaches on TV last night. It's when you got the right person leading the way. And I think Arkansas is a place when you got the right person leading the way, it can start to hum the way we know it can. And when it does that, like we mentioned, Arkansas can be a team that fights the 12 team playoff, 14 team playoff fighting to get to nine, 10 wins. And we're having kind of the same conversations about the hogs that we're having about teams like, you know, Missouri, LSU, Tennessee, some of these teams tied that in years past, we just be kind of talking about, Okay, going to be a nice eight and four, nine and three team. Maybe if things split, go ten and two. Now that conversation continues to they're going to do all that and can make a playoff. So, um, but I think the other two sports, John Calipari and Dave Van Horn, I think winning the national championship should be the expectation. I mean, that's why you have those two guys in those two positions. Chris, uh, last thing before I let you go, you mentioned kind of where Sam Pittman is. I want your vantage point. Um, you're in. Gamecock country. I know that there's different thoughts on Shane Beamer. You go down south to Gainesville, Florida, and I think Billy Napier has the hottest seat in the Southeastern Conference. Kind of where do you, with those three guys, and maybe you could toss someone else in there, where, where are you kind of feeling up on Beamer, Pittman, and, and Napier as we let you go? Yeah, Ty, I put Beamer number three. I, I think the seat is warming. I don't think he's on a hot seat yet. Um, I think there's real pressure to get back to a bowl game, but I think unless the wheels really fall off, a.k.a. 4-8 and eight or worse, mm-hmm. I think they're going to give him year five. I think they're going to give him 2025. I think most folks have circled year five as the year, fairly or unfairly, where it's got to pop. I think a lot of tie as well, uh, how Shane Beamer's judged, is what do they get out of the young quarterback, Lenora Sellers? I think most of the fans have convinced themselves this guy is kind of the the second coming, he is the answer. And so, you know, if that kid, for whatever reason, doesn't live up to the hype or underperforms, I think a lot of fans are going to point at the coaching staff. They're not going to point at the player. And, again, I think, Ty, you guys have probably felt that too. And all, all SEC fan bases have where it's like, okay, it's up to you to get the most out of this kid. That's, <laughs> that's your job. So, But I think Shane Beamer is going to be back in 2025 again, barring a disaster. Uh, Billy Napier ties really interesting to me because I think they need to get to a bowl game too, but it's just, I wonder what the number is going to be to where they boot him out of Gainesville because you do have DJ Lagway waiting in the wings. And I think you're going to have to make a really difficult decision on, okay, we're going to have to play the same schedule next year, but it's flipped. And do we really want to run the risk of running off Billy Napier and DJ Lagway hits the portal? Because I've heard people compare this kid to Lamar Jackson. Like they think he's, that good so maybe do you ride it out a little bit longer i mean it's weird to think about florida sitting to another five and seven season and kind of just biding their time and and, and letting a lagway show if he's the real deal but i think that's going to be a decision they have to make and then that brings us to sam Pittman, Ty. and you know whose seat is hotter i'd probably go napiers because i think gator fans are less patient right sam Pittman built up a lot of goodwill early in his tenure there but, Ty, when you look at that schedule, and you can look at it one of two ways. It's daunting. I mean, I think for Arkansas fans, they're probably tired of hearing about it because it's the same schedule that Arkansas plays every year. It's an SEC schedule. Nobody's got an easy one. But the home slate is something else. But there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, right, you play Tennessee, you play Ole Miss, you play Texas. I believe you've got LSU, if I recall correctly. Yep. I mean, you've got a bunch of big-time matchups on there where if you win one or two of those, Ty, that, those are going to be huge exclamation points on your season. But as we saw last year, there were home struggles, and I think there's been home struggles the last couple of years. It can go sideways in a hurry. That game against Oklahoma State week two, I think, is really pivotal. Beating Texas A&M, Ty, you and I have had these conversations. That's one the fan base desperately wants to get, especially against a year one Mike Elko. So I think there's a path to six wins, maybe even seven on that schedule. I think that's what Sam Pittman needs to do to show promise and show hope. And, you know, I think if he can do that and the offense is high flying, Bobby Petrino's back in town, I think he can extend his stay in Fayetteville because there will be some good vibes. But, I mean, Ty, I think it'll be a missed bowl game and there's going to be a change. 
Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.